Well, good morning. We're at Glenbow Ranch this morning. I was here yesterday, but the audio was, a, the recording was not great. Plus, the map was all over the place. So uh, I cleaned up my act overnight and we're doing it again. We should be in for a spectacular sunrise. Really spectacular. Such long downhills, steep uphills. Not only do you need to control your speed so that you don't burn your brakes out, and the brakes don't fade, but also save your battery. Use the downhills on pass zero or freewheel because you're definitely going to be leaning on that battery on the uphill. Ah. Let's go. And we, and we in time for the sunrise. So the confusion with the maps is if you use the maps with the officially marked bike trails, when you get here, many of those bike trails are not bike trails. No bikes are allowed. So yeah, there's a lot of confusion. Anyway. Yesterday I rode the trails and figured it all out. A little chilly this morning, of course. Hence why I'm here even a little bit earlier than yesterday. You say expecting a heat wave from like 10, 11 o'clock. So even though I'm a little chilled to the bone we should be fine i've also changed the route around a little bit to try and be more efficient because there was a lot of overlap you know, back and forth again the total ride is about 30 kilometers and some of it is very strenuous let's see this section now this section is nice. It's a, the lower part of Yodel Loop. We're not allowed to do the full loop, but the lower part is lovely. It takes you through this sort of foliage, tree, tunnel. Might be a little dark this morning, but we'll see. Oh, lots of deer. I don't know if you see that one prancing. Little two there. Saw another one going up the hill on the other side. Now the benefits of coming out to this trail is obviously it's slightly different to being in the mountains. But you really get a sense of uh, the back country, sort of prairie country. What it must have been like in the west back in the day. If you hear early enough, you catch the sunrise, you see some wildlife, no people around. Well, they do arrive a little later, but this early, nobody around. It was very rustic. Very nice. It's in great condition. Whoever manages it is doing an excellent job. Uh, you've got to control your speed. You don't want to come down these descents too fast. You know, bearing in mind it's gravel, your traction is compromised at best. Let's just turn my lights on in case somebody's coming the other way. There we go. As you can see, this overgrown vegetation is lovely. Really nice. I'm going to come through here at a controlled speed. You never know if somebody's coming the other way.
prepare myself for a little bit of a climb out here. I came the other way yesterday. There we go. So yes, they gravel roads, but the gravel's fine. Meaning it's not coarse. A little bit of instability if you're not used to it. Now we're going to go right and then go down to the river. You really feel quite remote down at the river. And that's the other thing. The river was... <laughs> I sound like I'm slurring a little bit. That's the cold. The river was a surprise find because on the map, it doesn't allow you to drop a bike route onto the river. And yet when I got here, there's a clear sign that says we can go down to the, the valley. Look at that fog. Lovely. Hopefully I can get that on camera later. It's not quite where we're cycling right now, so it's too bad. We'll see what we encounter. So it doesn't actually take you right down to the river itself, but you, you get very close. Chilly, chilly, chilly. Eight degrees Celsius is what my display is telling me. And then we have the sunrise. Hopefully I can get a nice photograph with the sun. That's the railway line. And we now enter this trail. And just to show you, if you look there, it says e-bikes. So like I said, that was a welcome surprise. I'm not pedaling at the moment, I'm, I'm using the, uh, well, let's put it in past zero, there we go. Using the downhill to s save the battery. There's much higher risk here, folks, of, of getting a puncture. So definitely bring your tire repair kit. That trail that leads off behind me, in the beginning it says no bikes allowed, and this end it says nothing. A little bit of confusion there. So the gravel's loose enough on the on the uh, relatively steep downhill sections that you could lock up your back wheel quite easily. So be aware of that. Nice, nice shadow, really nice. So I stopped briefly to photograph the sunrise over there with the fog. Hopefully it turns out nicely, I'll share it with you guys. You really do get the feeling you're, you're out in the back country doing a <laughs> mountain bike ride. So what is the advantage of coming here versus say Banff or Kananaskis? Well this is 30 minutes from Calgary for starters, which is convenient. And if you get here early enough you've got the whole place to yourself. I can keep my head down because the sun's shining right in my eyes, as you'll probably see shining right into the lens. A 
Hmm, we got a slow descent here. Okay. Oh yeah, this one's nothing. You could... So that's interesting. You stay seated, the front wheel lifts off the ground if it's steep enough. There we go. So Glenbow Ranch is a working ranch in the traditional sense. Try and give people a perspective of how it was in the West. I can't say I've seen a lot of cattle or anything, but according to the, the information provided, it's still a working ranch. Yesterday, we were lucky enough to have a train come past. I'll include that if we don't get another one today. And now, we just hit the trail south for quite some time and perhaps we'll stop somewhere along the way and enjoy coffee and my usual. Facilities here are very good. Lots of benches, lots of toilets and washrooms. Pathways in really good condition. Yeah, it's very nice, pristine. So if you're a tourist or somebody just looking for another ride, I'd recommend it. Regular bikes, make sure you're quite fit because there are some steep uh, inclines. I've just been thinking the inclines may give you a bit of a heart pump, but overall, the trail probably isn't the best for fitness, because you're spending probably 50% of the time freewheeling. You don't have to, of course, but you pick up so much speed, so you don't want to add to the speed and you want to save your battery. It's my opinion, but my Fitbit data yesterday also showed me my average heart rate was lower than I usually get, despite me having some struggles. You know, you'll stand up and pedal way more on this trail than you will on your usual average trails. I love the soft golden glow and the long shadows in the morning. Beautiful. And that, folks, on your right-hand side is the Bow River. This pathway that I'm on now is rumored to join Calgary to Cochrane in the future. But take that rumor with a pinch of salt because it's been rumored for 10 years. And it's so satisfying to be riding here. Slight chill in the air, nobody around, soft yellow glow. I think my average speed today will be slower. Partly because I also, I've changed the route up a lot. Route and route I use interchangeably. Think of all of you. Same as battery and battery. I'm a bit of a mongrel by now. 
be in North America for quite some time and then grew up in an English part of the world which was South Africa at that time so there's a mixture of accents and pronunciations and then my wife is British <laughs> and my daughter is Canadian so yeah, it's quite the mix so as you can see we're now in the middle of nowhere and then they have this shelter which I imagine is actually for the golf cart they have golf cart tours so I imagine you sit here and wait for the golf cart there's like a bus shelter very nice very nice seems to be my most commonly expressed slogan now I rode this before I rushed this section because it was during the heat of the day and I just wanted to get out of here and back but actually it really calls for a meander right and then we get to this closed gate and that's the end we have to go back so right out there in front of me would be Calgary further along you'll see the sim you won't see the ski thing but this the ski ramp is down there so ideally you could ride from Calgary to here except this pathway is not open and I'm not sure it's going to happen anytime soon despite the rhetoric so now we take a slow meander back ride the rest of the trails and I think I'm going to find a spot along here to enjoy a spot of coffee and perhaps find some photographs that I can take that would be nice anyway yesterday when I was riding along here I'll include the video because I don't think we're going to have the privilege today but we had a train come down my right hand side it was interesting so I've decided the next bench we find we're going to stop for coffee and just relax for a moment slow this all down we're still on the long railway section which is on your right so the purpose of Glenbow other than giving you a window into the past if you're not familiar with the geography in Alberta it's a nice contrast between the mountains and the prairies or the agricultural land so the prairies are flat some undulating hills but it's in direct contrast to what you would find in the mountains which is very much forested you look at my videos you'll see what I mean we're going through a sort of a little oasis here green trees uh, here we go now we're picking up a little bit of a momentum So as you can see the signage is great and tells you when to slow down it really is nice no speed limits though I'm imagining it's 20 kilometers per hour 
<laughs> you get out of the sun, you, it gets chilly. Wow. Uh, the sun coming through the trees like this is really beautiful. I suspect British Columbia is very much got trails like us. Calgary's got great bike biking infrastructure. It can be a lot better, but for recreational riders, it's amazing. Commuters still need a little bit of help. Backcountry's getting better. Other provinces, I can't speak for them. But definitely, if you're visiting Alberta, rent a bike, an e-bike, bring your own, come and check these parks out. They are beautiful. Okay, time to gear up here. Oh, look at this little forest. Stunning. I think my gear selections yesterday weren't the best in combination with uh, pedal assist. Or maybe I just had a good night's sleep. Get to freewheel. I've got the sniffles because of the cold. Pedaling like crazy, yeah? Keeping it in a low gear. And as you can see in my shadow, My toolbox is squeaking a bit underneath my saddle. If I lift my bum off the saddle, the squeak goes away. Now this is gonna be a stiff one ahead. Let's just go to first gear straight away. Much better. Yesterday I tried to stubbornly stay away from first gear. I don't know why. Male ego, I suppose. I just want to show you something. So there's a trail that leaves from here. Am I wrong? Wow. Oh said earlier, said no bikes. <laughs> I'm definitely wrong. Look at that. E-bike permitted. Can any of you tell what the problem is? The problem is you can't get your bike through there. Yeah. Anyway. We're going to stop here and enjoy some coffee. So we stopped for our coffee just to show you the facilities here. You've got garbage. Toilets. Not sure what they look like inside. Have a look. Yeah, it's just very ordinary. Whoops, bugs. And then, benches at the back here. It's just beautiful. All to yourself. I think my bike blends in with the landscape here. 
Anyway, we found another little gift. So despite this little gate setup, we can go around the side and do this trail, which I'm going to do so I can include it on the map for you guys. I'm just going to pack up here and then we can hit the trail. Okay. Let's go and discover this new part of the trail together. Which I've never done. I always thought it was inaccessible. And you just use half a second to figure it out. And we can bypass the fence by going around. Kind of defeats the object of having that gate. It's to keep the wildlife in around. I mean, they can just walk around the side. This again, she joins back up with the railway crossing. I've got some more lookout points and a bench. Excellent. Excellent. I'm standing up a bit more today on these gravel roads. Especially on the downhills, it's just something I used to do on a dirt bike and it just makes me feel more stable. You really do get to maximize your gravel riding at Glenbow Ranch. It's got quite a lot of gravel roads, so if you don't have gravel experience, there's probably another reason to come and ride here. I think that spot I found this morning for my coffee and breakfast might well be my most peaceful and secluded spot I have out of all the parks I've been to. So private. If that's your thing, that's beautiful. If it's not your thing, you'd be riding in the city. So, duh. Okay, we've got another little gate here. Luckily, we can get through this one. I suppose if you're an avid mountain biker, you'd come through here to, as fast as you can. I don't really see the point. Looks like there's a campground over there. Nice place to camp. They had a bridge over. If it'd be nice, you could come over. This it's private land. That little trail joins on to the one we took earlier. You need to be aware of that and then turn right back up to the railway. Otherwise, you're just going to loop around the river again. It's not the end of the world, but if you don't want to duplicate, then you must turn back. And then we're back at the railroad crossing. Going to our second part of the journey. Keep the camera on just so that you know where to make the turn. Because this morning we came out a little higher up. You, you'll recall we came through that uh, that sort of overgrown vegetation tunnel forest thing we came out there and we're not going up to the same point this time so you see this shelter like bus stop thing here it's got a park bench and whatever. We turn left here. 
This morning we came out over there. Now we're going left. And that's it. Uh, cattle corral is here on your right. Not sure if they still use it. Oh, we got a, a deer over there. I didn't bring my my lens. I think she's on the road. Ah, oh, there we go. She's gone. Gone down into the valley. There we go. Beautiful. It was such an elegant way of running. This is typical foothills, prairie country. It's sort of gentle hills. Nothing rocky or mountainous. So a lot of these inclines are unsuspectingly steep. They look like nothing when you approach them. And then you feel massive resistance to the extent that you think you've got a flat tire, but you don't. My best advice is come with a fully charged battery. Like even me looking, see what's going on. But <laughs> it's just that it's uphill. Definitely going to need to carry a carrier, kept a couple of extra chain links and the chain tool. Sometimes you feel like you're going to snap the chain. The beauty with a hub drive, if your chain does break, as long as you're rotating the pedals, the cadence sensor will still provide power. Let's see what this thing is. Yeah, I'm not really going to stop. But there's an information board there and you can read about whatever it is. Now we have a series of switchbacks to get us to the top. And then we go to the right. You can go to the left. There's a long gravel trail that you think takes you into Cochrane, but it doesn't. And if you've got enough battery power, you can do that loop back to here, but we're not. We're basically gonna grind it out to the top and then go to the right. So, second gear, pass four. I'll go to first gear if I need to. And we will chat again when I get near the top. Look at the deer. Yeah, I don't know if you can see that. Might just be out of your camera view. Right there. Three of them. Beautiful. Well, that climb was not too bad. You know, I'm reluctant to use pass five because that's maximum draw on the battery. And yesterday I pretty much stayed off pass five. And it's a struggle. What I'd say to the manufacturers, they really need to allow you to program the different pass levels. Not so much to give us extra power, but to, so that we can determine the level of power per pass level. You know, sometimes you want it all, man, but they don't allow you to use a throttle in these parks. So sometimes you want it all in pipe pass one or two. You know, I usually don't use pass five because of the drain on the battery. But today I used one and five climbed easily. Wow, the climbing rate between one and two is huge. There's a huge difference. 
You can see that on the cassette. Now this decline here is steep. You don't see it on the, uh, the video, but it really is steep. They say 12%. I don't know how that works, but it's probably equivalent of a, I don't know, a blue ski run. It's steep, and then you've got this left turn at the bottom. I've got full hydraulics again, uh, you know, just emphasizing the point that if you don't have them, you should upgrade. They really do make a big difference. And you know, you come down slow on the brakes, they don't overheat as much as coming down here at full speed on the brakes. I mean, at speed, there's so much friction, the heat you're generating exponentially more than if you come down your slow controlled rate and I'm coming down here at a slow controlled rate because everybody that comes through here is not going to have full hydraulics some people will have cable actuated hydraulics they they fine if they set up correctly others will have rim brakes but everybody needs to get through here safely and that that is mostly it. Got my nice new wider pedals. Standing up, weight back, all feels good. Nice wide platform and new pedals. You know, thicker gravel, you're gonna have a bit of movement. Some erosion here you need to deal with too. Nothing challenging. Well, all relative to your experience, but it's completely doable. If you're nervous of steep downhills or gravel, don't and then don't do these gravel rides. I mean the gravel here is quite deep. And deep gravel you've got to let the bike move. Let it move around underneath you. And that's it, folks. We're on the, the lower road, working our way back to the road that goes up back up to the lodge, which I think is this one coming up. And we turn left and we work our way back up. Yeah, left. Let's anticipate our gearing. And of course it's the long, the last long, whoop, uphill. You can pretty much use all your battery. So first gear. And it's hardly moving. But the jump from second to first, like I said earlier, is huge. One of the big reasons mountain bikes handle terrain that we can't is not because we're heavy, that's one of them, but they've got the gearing. And we turned in there this morning. Part of the reason I turn in there is to cut the speed. This is a long downhill and it's way too easy to get to the bottom at 50 k's an hour or so and there could be other path users it just seems like a hazard that's it back yeah now they ask us to dismount past the front of the lodge my guess is because you get a lot of people walking in and out the store. So if you have a look, it's quite the climb from the bottom 
up to here. I certainly wouldn't do it if I was on, on foot. Oh, look at this. We've got Bambi right on our path. Hey. I need to give you space, don't I? Let's go around, relax. Let's stay in first, nice pace. This last section. I'm really impressed with this bike. It's performed well. And that's it, folks. Back at the parking lot. <laughs>